Hello, my fellow YouTubers. I wanted to show you guys this. So right here, I don't have the wheel hooked up to anything. I do have my little reed switch thing going. Got it off right now. And I was having some metal shavings that I saved on these round things up top. You can see there's still some here. Well, from turning the wheel, these metal shavings were sucked off of these and then went to the handle. Riddle me that, Batman. Now remember, I haven't fired all the magnets up at once yet. I haven't, well, I guess I have. I've tried it, but I didn't run the wheel or anything. I didn't even turn the wheel. Pretty interesting. And they're on there pretty strong. You see them jump a little bit over. Another thing is, watch this. I'll lift the handle up. Watch them, watch how they act. See them falling down? Look, see them falling? And I go back on the handle. And I guess when I turn it, <clears throat> it must create a charge to the core on up the shaft. I, thought, I checked the block and it doesn't hold any any of these metal shavings. But this handle literally sucked them off those other magnets. So um, there's something about putting an array of magnets and then be, being able to uh, frequently make the magnet stronger, stronger from a relay or a 555 timer or any kind of oscillator is unique in itself. So it just opens up studies of where does it take you. Does it take you to the other side, the fifth dimension? Start warping. Look at that. I just went and grabbed it. So it obviously builds, builds up a strong magnetic field in the center. And the more you turn it, you're going to create, depends which way you go, you're going to be taking that energy and throwing it offward, okay? So one of my past experiments is I put a glass with metal shavings on the glass and had them, well, in between two pieces of glass, the metal shavings. And basically, the shavings, if I turn the block this way, the shavings would build up in this corner over here. Vice versa, they go over here. So you can see the energy that, that comes out off of it. I think you could recapture that energy on the tail end. So, obviously the steel is collecting this energy. Proof's in the top part of the steel. In fact, let's uh, check the compass, make sure it's correct, facing north, sure it is. Things are so strong over here when I, I can change the compass direction pretty easily when I fire these up. But uh, let's check the top of this and see what we have. It's the North Pole. Let's go to the bottom to verify that they are changed poles, right? Let's go to the bottom. Nothing. Nothing. Somewhere. So, as we go down, so we have two Norths. 
North up there, north down here. But when you get halfway, you can see the compass turn. So then you have, is it possible to store your negative only in iron? Good question. Well, there's gotta be two energies in there because these wouldn't be magnetized sticking up by themselves. You'd have to have energy chasing energy. So this whole apparatus is holding magnetism like at least gallons PMH. Although when these here, um, I mean, I haven't put power in this one for a long time, but you'd be surprised. There you go. So you'd be surprised how you can make something. That's pretty crazy. It's a little heavy, almost stick. Almost. But they seem to hold their magnetism, so the iron here could have that energy trapped in it. So, on Ed's PMH, he talks about when you pull the bar off the PMH, it takes that energy and it runs it through the coils. So, makes me wonder, the bottom on Ed's Coral Castle, he's got this sitting on the ground in concrete. So obviously it's touching ground. It's part of ground. Which makes sense because the iron from the ground is a great conductor. A lot of energy in the ground, so we gotta think about that one. This whole thing is one big ass PMH. Look at that, I can't believe this. So you can see that it's holding magnetism up top. There's gonna be some action going on in here, you guys. You know, I think with the aluminum, take something like this, start off with just putting aluminum. And maybe a small copper coil to transfer it from the aluminum. It depends, you know. I almost want to think of it in a way like a, a Wimshurst machine. So if I could create a static, in a sense, on top of a mechanical current electric then I bring another energy to the table and um, obviously the statics high voltage so we can see how we are going to possibly incorporate that into the whole mix here everything's in layers pretty much layers all right guys nine minutes Peace out. Got my little Tesla buddy back there. You know, I throw a little high voltage out there and a little static. It, it's amazing. I've been working on the difference in the metals in, in my workshop. And uh, uh, something interesting is this. This is came out of an electric heater that had all digital display and stuff and got the display over here. So pretty much all this do had stuff and it, it went south. So I took it apart. I got the fan here and I got this heating element. Well, this heating element kind of baffled me because I never seen it before. So the way this works is one side's a neutral, one side's a positive. 
and um, that's how you hook it up AC. And um, so I put it on my, my little uh, amp. I don't know if you guys ever seen these, they're pretty cool. It's an amp watt appliance load tester. Here's your amps and watts digitally. You plug in whatever into it and you plug it into the wall. So I started checking it and what it was doing was, it says it was rated for 1500 watts. So the watts went up to about 11 and as soon as it got hot, the wattage went down to like 190 and stayed there. And the amperage went down from like, it was like nine and a half amps and went down to like 2.1 amps. And, um, and it maintained a nice heat. So I said to myself, wow, look how, how I can make, I, I, I can adjust this. Because what you do is you take that fan the scroll cage and you just blow it through here and hot air comes out the other end and real comfortable air so and you can really make it forceful or less forceful but they don't give you all that they just make it so complex and when it has a shelf life when it breaks it gets thrown away and really the main parts of it is still works I mean unless you burn out an element but so anyway so fascinating about this I learned is the the wattage and the amperage started dropping and I couldn't figure out what was doing it. I thought maybe it was, it was burned out. So I took my mouth and started, I didn't touch this because it's warm, you know, hot, but I blew in there and I looked at that meter and all of a sudden you can see the wattage going up. I said, son of a bitch. That's like that night chrome wire, that, that, that heater element. There's little like cells, little coils. And obviously one side's insulated between the two to keep the two charges, but they're heating up this whole thing and the outside plates are, 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 are stoutier, but it goes in between the plates. And um, when, it, when you blow on it and cool it down, it loses its resistance. So in the beginning, it was throwing everything at it. And all of a sudden, as it got hot, it lost its resistance capabilities. So interested on different metals. I just wanted to make a point. I don't want to get into what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna make a kick-ass nice little fan. And I got all my own little switches for it and voila. This right here is going to be the um, my driver for my synchronous um, uh, rotary gap. This right here um, is gonna have, the belt is going to go to that pulley, okay? And I'll replace the big pulley, um, but put the belt to there, and then it'll turn this bottom part here. Now this bottom part here, I'll take this fan off, and pretty much uh, I'm gonna put a pin across like my finger and I'm just gonna have uh, connection nodes at the ends like bolts so I'll have that set up to a disc and the disc will be adjustable so I can vary just like a, a distributor in a car you can vary the timing and um, I'll be able to adjust that timing and then on top of that this here is an electric motor and the way this used to work this came out of a compressor, a little pancake compressor, air compressor. It's got a little locomotive end on it, makes that go up, makes air pressure, bam. But anyway, so the rotor right there, the inside rotor, it had bushings on it, two of them. So that made electricity in the middle, which turned this thing. So they were turning it from the inside and have a coil around the outside and then you got your stator, I guess, or whatever in the middle. So I was thinking, when the wheel is turning, I would like to see if I can convert this to make electricity also, because if I put those um, bushing, uh, those little uh, brushes back up, um, 